Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to be going over the pre-made instant super shelter. So when it gets down to the teens like this, you need to upgrade a lot of things. You need to upgrade your clothing, you need to upgrade your shelter in case you have to spend a night in the woods. And that's where the Morse Kahansky style super shelter really comes into play. So what I've got here is a reusable space blanket. So this is super common. Uh, this is uh, the high-vis version, but usually I carry a green one. And it's got like a mylar coating, a reflective coating on the inside. So what that does is reflects light and heat from the fire back down on you, giving you uh, more heat than you would get with an, either an open fire or a traditional tarp. Now the, the Morris Kansky Super Shelter uses clear plastic in front of the shelter. So the rays go through the plastic, hit the mylar, start bouncing around in there and can't get out. It's basically a greenhouse that you are making for yourself. So as I mentioned, the reusable space blanket is a pretty common item for people to carry for their shelter component in an emergency kit. Traditionally, uh, when it gets cold weather, people will add plastic, uh, a clear plastic drop cloth is most common, and then you will make a super shelter when you're in the woods. And great idea, great concept, it works, it saves lives, but I think there's a better way. So this is a pre-made super shelter. Uh, this is a little bit bulkier than the standard shelter, but not a whole lot. This looks like you uh, kind of just packed it up in a field. Usually you can make them nice and tight, and as soon as you set them up a couple times, uh, they usually don't fold down as close. So, you know, it fits right in my haversack here. It fits in small backpacks. This is a very, very common thing for people to carry, uh, and it's just slightly bulkier. Uh, done up like I have it here. So my theory with this, you know it's cold. It's not a surprise that it's in the teens and you decided to go out today. So instead of simply adding a plastic drop cloth to your existing tarp, why don't you pre-make the existing tarp and do a super shelter? So what I did is I actually made this up at home. This was set up in the basement. You do not want to do this in cold weather like this. Uh, if I didn't have space to do it inside, I would set this up on a, even a 40 or 50 degree day, something nice in the sun. This is put together with plastic. I use scissors to make precise cuts, and I use Gorilla Tape to hold down the plastic to the tarp itself. Uh, it adheres super well to this. Most every tarp I have has a hole in it or a tear of some type. Uh, this always gets replaced with duct tape, and the Gorilla brand duct tape uh, will probably outlast the shelter itself. So five minutes seems to be a standard time for to get your shelter up. You should be able to get your shelter up in five minutes, get a fire going in five minutes, have water boiling in five minutes. So 15 minutes total, you should have fire, you should have your shelter up, and you should have water on the boil. So I'm gonna set a goal for this, to have it up for five minutes. Now, when I've made super shelters in the past, it's usually, you know, you're improvising. I've used tape, I've used uh, clothespins, I've made clothespins. There's all kinds of way to fabricate and bushcraft this thing if you had to, but this is an emergency shelter. So when I'm out here and the sun's setting and I'm lost and I need to make a shelter real quick to keep from freezing, I do not want to be screwing around, pulling out my duct tape, finding green sticks, bushcrafting up uh, clothes pens. So this is going to go up just like any lean-to. Uh, that's the whole point of this. It's just going to go up like a standard tarp. I'm not gonna do anything special, the fact that it's a super shelter. I'm gonna get it up, see if I can do it in the five minute uh, period that I've set for myself. And then I'll go over how I put it together and the advantages of having a pre-made shelter like this. All right, so to get this done, I'm gonna take my gloves off and as soon as I hit the ground, I'm gonna start.
Okay, so it's up. But of course, I had to put it up so the uh, screen I wanted to show is facing the other way. That's just the way I happened to grab it. Uh, you got to pay attention to that, I suppose, uh, if you already had your fire lay, especially. I'll flip the camera around the other side here and show you how I pre-made the super shelter. So I don't know exactly how long that took me to put up. I would say maybe two minutes or so. I mean, I wasn't, uh, you know, flying, trying to get it down to under a minute or anything. Everything went smooth and went up just like any normal shelter. So having the shelter plastic on, the super shelter plastic pre-taped, saved me all that extra BS of setting up a shelter and then trying to cover the shelter. And then as this is happening, the wind's blowing. You can see the wind's blowing and I'm fighting a little bit now. So I cut off all excess plastic. I cut the plastic off the back. It's got a stitch seam. So I skipped a space, put tape, skipped a space, put tape. I set the tarp up intentionally high when I made this and I left myself a full foot at the bottom. So a foot when it's high, meaning under normal circumstances, I've got about 18 inches of plastic here. So when I made the shelter, the shelter was technically up. I came around to the front, found a log, rolled it up into plastic, and now I've got that nice 90 degree face that is gonna let the light and the heat from the fire go into the shelter and not come out. All right, so this is the sealed up end. This is the end I have zero intention of ever going in and out. This is overlapped uh, when I cut it and I went ahead and stitched it with Gorilla Tape. You cannot peel the tape off this plastic without tearing the plastic itself. So this is essentially one solid piece of plastic. You can kind of see down the line how I've got that nice sheer 90 degree line. And that's all from right here. That's all from leaving, uh, leaving a tail, finding a stick or a log rolling it up, putting a little tension on it, and uh, letting the weight of that hold it straight. So here's the back of the shelter, just normal tarp here. Uh, you can see the stitch marks as I put tape, line of tape. Same thing along the top here. I've got a solid row of plastic with tape intermittently placed. So eventually, uh, how's the durability of this? I'm sure it's going to tear. Uh, anytime you use a super shelter, you end up burning plastic or something tears. Uh, any kind of wind like this is what usually eats them up, so you need to have it nice and tight. So by eliminating the excess plastic, I eliminate a lot of that available plastic that's going to catch the wind and whip it that you're struggling to secure out in the woods. So this is the end I'm going to use for the door. I came down about halfway. So basically you're going to have to crawl into this thing to try to eliminate as much gaps as possible. And I left this open. Once I get in here, I would roll this up, put a sticker or log on it or something. Uh, some people worry about asphyxiation in a super shelter. I don't think you're ever going to get it that tight. I personally would never worry about it. But uh, if it was something you were worried about, uh, leaving a gap like this on one end is the best way to eliminate that. All right, so the premise of this whole thing is why take your summer shelter out in the middle of winter? You know it's cold out. Don't just add a piece of plastic and try to adapt it. Go ahead and pre-make a super shelter purpose-built. Have this set up with your winter gear, rotate it in and out. Uh, this is the best way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and just leave the camera roll while I tear this down. You can see how it packs back up again. It's actually uh, really not that much different than a standard tarp. It is way better than having a sheet of drop cloth plastic and then trying to deal with that as a second item. Usually it rolls up into something the size of a basketball. Uh, this is not too bad. Uh, I'll roll it up, show you how it is when it goes back together.
All right, so I got my three steaks back in the bag. And you can see this is bigger. I mean, I'm not gonna tell you it's not. Only thing is I left out the bowling end of my ridge line. That was the only change I've really done to my whole system. And it'll still fit in my haversack just fine. So what I have here is a dedicated winter shelter. It's right in my haversack. It's a little bit bulkier than normal, but it's still a hell of a lot better than carrying your summer shelter and then a piece of plastic just to make a super shelter in the field. So go ahead and pick a nice day where it's not too cold and the wind's not too bad. Go ahead and set yourself up a picture perfect super shelter. Trim off all the excess, put duct tape in place, have your ridge line ready to go, fold it up nice and neat, and then bring it out here on a cold day. See how it works, see how the plastic works when it's catching on the trees, and see if you don't like a pre-made super shelter as opposed to trying to craft one in the field. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and hit the like button, ring the bell to be notified on all my latest videos. Till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.